first of all, this man that carried me to come to Germany. <laughs> And welcome back to my channel. This guy is doing her please. Please, welcome back to my channel. Focus. Welcome back to my channel. So, this is Goodness's Diaries. And on my channel, I talk a lot about nurse immigration into Germany, life in Germany, face, hair care, everything, pretty much. But today, I have this beautiful lady here. Some of you already know her from YouTube and from Instagram. This is Ninja Girl in Germany. She stole that name from me, but let's, let's not go there. <laughs> Attenzione, pickpocket! Let's not go there. But who else? No is evidence. <laughs> There's no evidence to prove this. <laughs> but let's focus. Let's do as if it's all right. I'll just take my Quinesta works. So, guys, let's find out who Ogina is. Who is Ogina? So, hi. <laughs> I'm Oge. Um, Niger girls. In Germany. We're all Niger girls in Germany, but. You know, since I was the first to rush and take it, I don't know why she was not taking it. Since that she was in Germany before me, <laughs> we in Germany before me. I don't even know. We'll find out. Anyway. Just finish. <laughs> 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 so I'm okay. I, I live here in Germany. I'm a lighting designer, an architectural lighting designer. So I live and work here in Germany, and I also create content on living in Germany, especially as an expert. You see the way her profession is sounding like his own big team. It's <laughs> like <laughs> Can do lies that they're arranging. Jealous. It's a little work that she's doing. That's a rich can't do. <laughs> it's nothing serious. It's not for serious. You know, people that do all this medicine, nursing, these are people that know boo. People like us, we don't know boo. <laughs> it's only to just put, is it shining? It's shining. That's don't, so don't believe anything she says. <laughs> okay, so how did you come yeah. to Germany and what kind of visa did you need? Hmm. First of all, this man that carried me to come to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> this is the place where she felt betrayed. I feel betrayed. I was on my own peacefully. Somebody said, let's go to Germany. <laughs> Anywho, I, I came on a student visa. So we both came to study um, our master's here. And yeah, we came with a student visa. Ah, nice. So you did your master's where well, here? Yeah. Here in Germany, yeah. Where? In Wiesma. Wiesma. The village. is like one very small. See, yeah, if you're watching this video, don't. Don't do what I did. Go to a big city. <laughs> because when we were choosing schools, I was like, let's look for a school that is really cheap and yeah. the city is really small, you know, so that everything, cost of living will be really low. Oh, they did not tell me. Bad idea. <laughs> Bad idea. Even though the school in itself is a very good school, it's a very small town close to um, Hamburg area. It's mm -hmm. like about two hours from Hamburg. Um, oh. also. But it's so small. You have very few people there. It was so bad because I could... I. I was the only African in my department. But I was the first African to ever study in that department. That's how small. Wow. But yeah. When I first came to school, the first day I opened, <laughs> I got to them because I resumed late due to visa issues. And then I got to the class after I was directed to the class, of course. And then I got there as soon as I opened the door, everyone looked at me like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> it was weird. The professor looked at me like, "Yeah." I was like, I, I, I'm in this class. He said, huh? I said, yeah. So throughout that first class, <laughs> everyone was staring, everyone at, was staring at me like, huh? So after the class, I, I met the professor because, of course, they were saying all kinds of jargons I didn't understand. So I was like, let me go and talk now before this was point. So I had to meet her to say, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm talking about projects, talking about all kinds of stuff. And then she said, first of all, she's going to apologize for the way she reacted Aww. on seeing me. Ah, oh, that's sweet. That I'm the first African that I've ever had in this department. So uh, it was really weird. It was really odd for her. I and she like, tried. Yeah, it's okay. So she then, of course, gave me all the information that I, yeah. that I needed. But yeah, cool. I'll say. So how long have you been in Germany? What year did you start your master's? 2019 September. Ah, so I've been here before her. I'm I knew it, you're old. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> That's hot. That is painful. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> I'll forgive you. So you'll be here to 2019, and yeah. this will be your fourth year in Germany. Yes. Yeah. Two plus two is four. Minus one. That's three. Quick maths. Cool. Is it four years? It's 2023. Yeah, it's four years. 
Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and she says she's not old. <laughs> she's been a while, man. Yeah. And so what have you been doing since after your master's? What do you do now? Now I work. I work with a lighting design firm where I do mostly lighting for cities, for um, yeah, cityscape generally. Mm. Villages. <laughs> no, <I don't> know about <laughs> the villages in this country are all villages. <laughs> but then we also do like um, outdoor lighting for parks. So yeah. lots of the parks in Germany ah. we do the lighting. So lighting. like when it comes to Christmas, is it you yes, job? We also do all the Christmas lighting. Ah. Um, so maybe have bridges, don't yeah. do like facade, uplift facades for certain parts of the city. We do that as well. Oh. Our That's work good. is to make the city look beautiful. Wow. So I have a, I have a big question. So why is there no light on the autobahn, on the express? <laughs> I'm in danger. Hmm? On the express, there are usually no lights at night. Don't act so shocked. Usually very dark. I mean, I, drive at I, mean I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. But you know that in, in Europe, there are lots of... Um, rules mm -hmm. as regarding use of lots of things so especially because of the environment and one of the biggest things that we try to not do is affect the natural ecosystem so you mm. have <laughs> you have lots of areas where you have trees plants the birds mm. insects they need to also have breeze. some yeah some breather and the autobahn by Normal thing in the middle of the people are not really supposed to be on the autobahn by by such um such as such as, <laughs> as such and then you are moving with your with your car yeah, yeah, yeah. so that normally is supposed to be enough, enough. to take your because people are not walking on the autobahn you're not going to hit anybody the next except, car except they are walking on the autobahn who is <laughs> There's nobody walking on their feet and the other but if there's a construction work, there will always be light. Put yes, the yeah. warning light. So since there's no need to for that conflict Extra. that then there's no point to just waste electricity in that area. But then when you now begin to move into the inner cities where you have either people crossing or bikes and all those mix of transportation, then there's no need for uh -huh. um, so the, the street lights are actually for pedestrians, not necessarily for the cars. Yes, they are for the cars as well, but... Okay, so this is how it works. <laughs> Classes. <laughs> so this is how it works. For different types of road, there are different light levels. Yeah. So when you have places where you're having different um, use, the light, there has to be such that the difference in the lighting is enough for someone to differentiate this from this and it takes a lot for that difference to happen for that difference the way your eye recognizes light in, in all these different areas the distinction for that is very very long however on the autobahn you are only going to be having people who are driving like on really high speed only cars in this um in this instance and they're not usually a lot at that time of the oh, night the, yeah, yeah okay so in actual sense why are we having the lights on all through the night if there will be hardly anyone using it. The yeah. people who are going to be using it will have their car light on. And because there's no difference in light um, levels in that place, you would actually see clearly what is how it works there. But then by the time you move into the inner cities, you now have different light levels. So you now really have to have those bigger roads really, really, really bright so that you can see a clear difference between that road yeah, and, and a living area. Exactly. Okay. I'm going to act like I understood every what you said, but <laughs> we get it, don't we? So going back to your professional um, uh, escapade. <laughs> <laughs> Please, oh, no. forgive my English. My German is, is wonderful right now. So going back to that, you did uh, you did a master here when you came to Germany. Yeah. Before then, before then how, what qualifications did you have before you moved here? I had my BSc from Nigeria, of course. Ah, okay. But then I also had a diploma for interior design from ah. KLC London. Ah. But yeah. But I got the admission for the masters with the BSc, not with the, the Ah, uh, they didn't consider the diploma. No, I didn't consider but I didn't need that. Yeah, for the for the course I was doing. Oh. My because I studied architecture in BSc. So my architecture degree was already good enough. My work experience I already had, I think, about five years work experience, so that was yeah. good enough. My portfolio, all of that is good enough. In fact, without the work experience, I would have still gotten it. What they really needed was my BSc. Any extra thing is just jar. Jar. Okay. 
So, you made a video on your Instagram. There are two videos I'm going to attack. The first one, you made a video about um, skilled workers moving to Germany okay. and what that process is like and how much skilled workers are even required in Germany and all of that. Do you feel that skilled work, lack of skilled workers crunch in your everyday? <laughs> there's, a, there's a thing with this skilled workers thing. There's a complaint that we have a lot of skilled workers currently in Germany who are not even employed. Uh -huh. You know, and the government keeps saying every year they say we need 400,000 skilled workers to come into the country, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> but the truth is, yes, there's a lack of skilled workers. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we have, like, we all experience with um, DB and all of that. They're always having issues. Uh, oh, DB, though... DB is the Deutsche Bahn, like the. Yeah. The Deutsche, that's the German train system. German train. <laughs> yeah, there are always issues. Although, a large part of their issues is um, finances. They want more money and all of that. But then you also have issues with, like, say, getting someone to fix stuff for you in your apartment. Mm. Because you don't have a lot of handymen as, as such, you have these guys charging you ridiculous amounts of, amount of money. money. Yeah. But if you have more people who are doing that, there are more opportunities, uh, okay. more options, rather. Yes. And then they cannot be telling you some kind of the time when they want to yeah. do some things. Yeah. yeah. And you have certain jobs that people don't want to do anymore because as people are, um, the more educated people you have, the less um, willingness to do certain kinds of yeah. jobs. So, yeah. Amazing. I like the only way you said that there are a lot of skilled workers already in Germany that are not even Because when it comes to like handyman jobs, there are a lot of people under the asylum system. Mm -hmm. Many of them probably don't have a training yet, I'm assuming, but a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. But they are locked up in one camp. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. It's all of this bureaucracy with Germany, that's the, that's the major issue. And I think it's the, the, the new discussions on trying to cut down all of this bureaucracy is very good. Because you have, like you said, these asylum people. Some of them are, some of them are not uneducated. They're mm -hmm. educated people. They, mm -hmm. have, they have proper skills and, and stuff. And mm -hmm. they can't get certain jobs because bureaucratic systems. And maybe because they came here through mm -hmm. this asylum system, which is the way life does happen to them. Not because they don't know what they're mm -hmm. doing. You know and stuff but germany has too many things that you need to um see put in place which is good that they're working on it now with documentations like i said bureaucracy. Yeah. if all of that is taken out of the way some of these um skilled workers can be mopped up easily yes. before then into the system yeah, then get okay. speaking of moving to germany so there are now currently mm -hmm. there are three options for people for skilled workers to move to germany mm -hmm. and so there's the job seekers visa there's employment visa and there's the newest baby in town the opportunity card yes, visa. So. <laughs> so if you had an option to choose from the three because you're very you're very qualified and someone who is as qualified as you will have these three options mm -hmm. to choose from so if there's someone like you are a skilled worker out there what would be your preference what would you say they should look out for well the easiest and the most the easiest generally would be the employment visa of course mm -hmm. if you have a job directly from Nigeria or Ghana or wherever, mm -hmm. definitely that would be better to just come with. It's easier, it's straightforward, all the bureaucracy around that is, is not as difficult. However, getting a job from outside of the country is not as easy if you are not in certain kinds of fields, you know. So yeah. like nursing, for people now, people can get jobs yeah, outside it, her. Yeah. Or the IT people, those guys are uh, the, <laughs> they are the blood they body people. <laughs> they are the giveaway people. <laughs> they are the people that are, <laughs> they are just getting everywhere. You know, and of course, not just because you're in IT, you know what you're doing and stuff. So people in those kind of fields can easily get jobs from outside of the country. But then if you are not in the country, the opportunity card is a great way. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, sorry, if you're not within that field, rather, yeah. the opportunity card, I think, would be a great um, option to go with. Okay. Because with that, you can come in despite the um, field that you're in. Yeah. And you can easily probably learn the language as quickly as you can within that period that you have mm -hmm. you can begin to look for a job it is generally easier to find a job when you're in the country yes as opposed to when you're looking for the yes. job from outside the country. So that's yeah. why this opportunity card is very very beautiful okay that um that germany is putting their money where their mouth is since they yeah. are saying they need more people to come into the country more skilled workers yeah they're putting their money where their mouth is by saying okay come first yeah let's get you to that let's point. get you there mm -hmm. so with the i believe with the presence of the opportunity card visa there's no need to keep up with the job seeker visa because it's pretty much like the unupdated version the mm -hmm. older version of the... yeah and the pressure with job seeker visa is like you have a very short period mm -hmm. six months you have to be you have to find that job in six months well if you don't find that job in six months you have to leave yeah so if if you have the 
even though people come and they still find jobs within that period but then if you have the opportunity to take the opportunity card why not take it it's, it's less pressure <laughs> take a chance yeah take a chance. <laughs> but again but for me i still prefer to at least gone for the employment visa first because that's the surest one yeah no. you this of course, everyone knows that you don't put yeah. your eggs in one basket if you are Apply for everything, university, school, <laughs> everything, work, everything. <laughs> Whichever one works first, mm -hmm. you know, you, you take it and then you start yes. working on that. Because mm -hmm. if you are coming for, for um, the only one that you not need to show money is the employment. Yeah. Estate. If you're coming for your opportunity card, you need to still show money. Yes. If you're coming to school, you need to show money. So why yeah. don't you just... Try. Try everything. Yes, then whichever one try. works first. So referring to another reel you made. Mm -hmm. Of which after that one you got a lot of bass loose. <laughs> <laughs> so she made this reel on Instagram. I probably had this somewhere around just so you can give you can see it, what it looks like. She mentioned how uh I'm just going to reduce that to Nigerians. They're just Nigerians, but a lot of a lot of a lot of African foreigners who moved to Germany are not quick to change their numbers mm -hmm. to German numbers. Doesn't mean they don't have a German number. Surely you have to have a German number in order to be able to even work with the system. Mm -hmm. But they don't like, surely when it comes to using social media, they keep their social media on their older number so that people who know them before now don't know that they now they have, have a German number. <laughs> and they have gone to their abroad. <laughs> so, and the question is, is it really because of village people? Most often than not, it is because of village people. Because a lot of us, <laughs> a lot of us have this superstition. I don't want to say, um, I don't want to invalidate their okay. fears. Yeah. Okay. They have this for a couple of reasons, actually. First, some people are like, I don't want people to know I'm abroad. Evil people are everywhere. Blah, 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 blah. Bloop. You know the thing with you want to travel. You don't tell anybody the day you're traveling so that they don't put evil spirit on the road for you. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Then you have other people who don't want to share who don't want to update their numbers because they don't want people calling them for money, ask for uh, money. Because some people just feel like because you are now abroad, you have you have money. Yeah, they don't know what you're doing in the abroad. They don't, sure. know, they don't know what you're doing. <laughs> they just feel like ah, this number is not a Nigerian number. She must have money right because now. Her money is there. Even if that number is from Guinea Bissau. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. No shit. <laughs> No shit to Guinea Bissau people. I'm just trying to just make a point that they, no matter where you are, it doesn't they don't care. <laughs> it's not Nigerian number. You are abroad. You have money. So I also understand that could also be another reason why some people want to um, mm -hmm. change their numbers. But mm. it is what it is. <laughs> sure, I'm not going to say anything. I'm a, I'm I'm guilty of this because when I moved to South America, then I did not change my number till like two years after I had Ooh. graduated from my BSc. Oh yes, I didn't, and it wasn't because I was I was afraid that people would ask me for anything. Mm -hmm. It was because I didn't want people to to interrupt my process. No, so I was oh. in school. I don't want people to start talking to me about oh you have traveled. Uh, how did you travel? When did you go? When are you finishing school? How did I didn't want that? And I was in a very mm -hmm. difficult time in my life where mm -hmm. I was living in South America. Mm -hmm. It's not Germany. It's not everything is not settled. Mm -hmm. I was still hustling in the hustle mentality. Like I was still really really there. Mm -hmm. I still had the times when I didn't have enough money on me. How to I really had to depend on my parents for, for a lot. So the last thing I want now is somebody trying to compare my life to someone else who's living in the US or in Canada. When you mm -hmm. tell them living in South America, they just say America, they're like, You gotta be <laughs> you gotta be there, you, you gotta, gotta money. Be. It don't work that way. So that was my reason. It was I don't know if that counts for village people. No, actually I don't have a problem with people not changing their numbers. That's not the I think yeah. a lot of people misinterpreted the, the, the video. Yeah. What I was trying to say was, for let's say now, you are in Germany now. Mm -hmm. I'm also in Germany. Mm -hmm. And I want to chat you up on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. I need to now get your Nigerian number to chat you up. That's the part <laughs> I don't understand. You can get two WhatsApps. Okay. You can get... There are so many ways to go around this. You can have yeah. double WhatsApp on your phone. That has people, yeah. Our phones now can do that. Yeah. Or you can have one WhatsApp as business WhatsApp and then as regular WhatsApp, where you mm -hmm. can use the business WhatsApp as, with your German number. Yes. So that people who you are interacting with here in Germany mm -hmm. can easily communicate with you. With yes. you know, because how many people call these days? People will just chat on Chats, WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah. Nobody does calling really per se. Unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah. So, but people at home, I I, I don't care what whether you, they have your number or not. Is there is how you interact with your people? It's your business. Mm -hmm. But for people that you are with in the country, don't make it difficult for me to reach you, please. You are stressing me. <laughs> <laughs> Is a sign yeah. of <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I have to save your number twice. I have to yeah. save 
then I want to reach out to you, I have to be sure that okay, the WhatsApp I'm chatting is the Nigerian WhatsApp, but it's not yeah. the German one. Yeah. For me, it's just a lot of stress. But I do understand the reason behind a lot of people not changing their, numbers their WhatsApp that number. It's very understandable because yeah. the pressure is a lot. The pressure is getting worse. Mm. Yeah. Whether it's, whether it's bad, say you're, say you're running from evil or whatever it is that you believe in. Or from your ex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or whether it is, like you said. <laughs> Whoever it is you are running away from, no problem. Run away from them in peace. But I'm not part <laughs> of those people. Don't stress me. <laughs> Why are you yeah, Because people say, people entered my DM and they told me things. <laughs> I opened the things and say, hell, oh, it was only a video. It was only a reel. My sister, my brother, it's not that serious. <laughs> and especially on TikTok. Well, it's, on, uh, it's on TikTok. People really send me of messages. They're just saying, so you don't know. You don't know what people are going through. That is the reason why you are just saying all this kind. Of... <laughs> Sorry, sir. That's what she saw on the media. She said she needed three million. Three, yeah. three million naira. No, she's not my relative at all. We, we are from she different parts of the country. She just sent a message and said she sent. Yeah, we are colleagues. And so she said she really needed three million. She sent me a twenty minute uh, voice note to explain why she needed three million naira. I'm really flattered that you really felt like I'm the person for it. I believe in myself now that. I want to thank me for believing in me. I can't do this. Thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for believing in me. For three million, girl. I hope you're not watching this video, though. Because <laughs> I'm not ready for the backlash. No, yeah, but the thing is, if the person knows you before, you know me, I'm always in devil's advocate. <laughs> but if the person already knows you before, beforehand, it's not like you're just a random person on the internet. The person already knows you before, and the person is stranded and in need of something. There's not, there's nothing bad in saying my sister. It's you not have... a matter. It wasn't a matter of my kidneys not working. <laughs> I need two million. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Well, thank you, God, thank God. you for believing in me. <laughs> I really can't. The, the people I don't understand is strangers that you don't know from anywhere. Yeah. They just saw your video on the internet and then they send you message. And they just assume. First of all, what is the most marvelous when I want to get some gems like that? <laughs> they never lost me. Let me When I see some gems, I'm, I, I'll go and check my Instagram and go and say, what have I done on the internet that gives this person the impression? <laughs> First of all, I check my follower count. There are not many like that. Because, <laughs> you know, some people will see that when you have so many followers, they assume that you have more. You have plenty. I, say, I don't even have plenty of followers like that. So, where is this person getting this information? I think from? Instagram is paying us $1 per follower. So, that'd be nice. Oh my God. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> on to my last question. I don't even know if it's a trick question for you. Okay. But, so, like we said earlier, you're a YouTuber, you're a social media influencer, you do a lot on Instagram, TikTok, um, YouTube. Would you give up your job? Oh. <laughs> wait, bear in mind, before you forget yourself and your boss will read this, see this video, bear in mind that you actually like what you do. You actually yeah. great. Like the lighting for this video, she set it up herself. Ah. I was wasting my time and she just caught me like, girl, I got you. <laughs> and she set it up. Even though that's not what I happened. Oh, but anyway, God. she set it up. Would you give up your job? What you currently do for YouTube and social media? For instance, no. No. Like I said, I really love my job. I, I, I really love what I do as a designer for all those many, many things. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it too much to leave it. <laughs> to leave it. Although one can also never say never because yeah. something can happen in the future and maybe for whatever reason, I'm not able to still do my regular job. Then I'm now stuck with you. Know, yeah. Then I cannot say, ah, because I say I will not leave it. No, that one is, not, that one is not, not a serious just mm -hmm. But all things being equal, yeah. I, I wouldn't leave my job for, for YouTube. For me, YouTube is just something I do on the side. Even if you are making ten ten thousand dollars a year. Honestly, even if I'm making month. a lot of money from ah, if I'm making ten thousand dollars on month, YouTube. In the month. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> that job in the mod. <laughs> <laughs> that job is gone and go to the mod. <laughs> oh my <laughs> This is how we left uh, life in design. <laughs> And now she said, <laughs> I want to my YouTube and say, guys, I'm quitting. <laughs> I don't want to see people that say, I quit my job. <laughs> I come and do video and say, I'm quitting, though, guys. Yeah. This YouTube, you be like, say, it's the future. <laughs> Although it's not, it doesn't, it's not like YouTube is not, a, it's not a great job to have. People are making a decent yes. living on YouTube, you yes. know, I know. But I didn't start YouTube as a 
means people say this is not like a cliche thing but it's true i didn't start youtube as a means of income mm -hmm. i did it i started it out of boredom during the pandemic ah. i was like i can do this like i've never ever not worked in my life okay so that's pandemic time that we're not going anywhere yeah. i was gonna lose my mind i was, I was like I've, I've slept i woke up it's been like two weeks i'm like <laughs> but are we gonna continue <laughs> doing this <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually how I started um, yeah. doing the YouTube thing. So it wasn't, it wasn't the original plan wasn't to do it as a job. Yeah. But this is my job. Oh, I can go beg somebody that I don't mind. I can be working for you like maybe one hour, two hours. Yeah, yeah. Just, 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 to, just you know, to, to, yeah, to keep that excitement going. But yeah. Um, that was. But nice. give me ten thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We'll see about that one. Abby. Thank you for coming on my channel. <laughs> Thank you. It was really cool being here. Yeah. Lovely. So, guys, uh, if you haven't seen my other videos talking about skill workers and nurses who want to move to Germany, please check out there. my other videos. You'll see them linked at the end of this video. See you guys until my next video. Ciao. Bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe. But don't try yourself. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Kindly God. like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. 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 You make me feel like I'm made